that's where the problems start racking up with men, right? It's very estrogenic if you're using it in a bodybuilding sense. You know, this book is talking about therapeutic benefits. I'm not talking about that here. I'm talking about why everyone looks at men. What is up, everyone? It's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907. Check out 1907.com. Keep on code Russo. ASMR spritz, intelligent elephant carbon. Young LA for this pimp jacket. All other discounts in the pin comment down below. Welcome back to Peducation. Andrew, this one has been requested the entire time Peducation has existed. And I'm not really a fan. Trestalone acetate, men. Where am I at with this? So let's get into it. Trestalone men is super popular for one reason. The reason everyone knows. It was still legal for a certain amount of time. It was not included on that ban list. I don't know if that ban list has changed, but that's why there was a reemergence of mint. Now it does present some, you know, benefits over a standard 19 nor, but in the sense of like, why is the hype around it? Point blank, being blunt, that's why the hype's around it is because certain individuals online can still sell it in a less risky venture for them than, you know, traditional on the list banned steroids. That's why I'm here talking about men. I'm going to be going through the history and everything in between, but I'm going to stick towards my experience. So I have a lot of experience with Trestolin because I fed into the hype. I fed into the hype. I did the Trestolone no ester oral tablets. Um, I also injected Trestolone acetate and I'll have Andrew link the bloat lord Trestolone videos. Let's get started. So mint is short for methyl testosterone acetate and a synthetic steroid from Nandrolone. This is a 19 nor, and this is a more tweaked version of a 19 nor to still kind of keep that androgenic side there. And I just recently talked about D-Trend DOS and doing DECA only and having heightened libido. But again, in practice, especially with, you know, the Anabolics 11th edition with doctors, testosterone is always normally hovering around when you add in DECA, which when you add in DECA and testosterone together, it's very easy to create a scenario where you're suffering from erectile dysfunction. When we do DECA only, I would doubt that would even happen. And you would definitely have almost a heightened libido in my personal opinion. But again, according to the doctors who are trying to, you know, utilize this in a TRT, HRT perspective, ment came along to kind of be a little bit more androgenic. The next thing about ment is it's not methylated. With a 17 alkylated methylation, it is C7 right? So it's not C17. I played around with oral no ester, 30 minute half life, did nothing to my liver enzymes. But again, it wasn't really much to note. I'm just being honest. Other things to note about mint is it cannot be dihydro converted, aka the way the steroidal structure, which I'll have Andrew bring up, 5-alpha reductase apparently cannot bind to it and dihydro it right it does however convert to seven alpha methyl estrogen that's where the problems start racking up with men right it's very estrogenic if you're using it in a bodybuilding sense you know this book is talking about therapeutic benefits i'm not talking about that here i'm talking about why everyone looks at men because you look at anabolic and androgenic steroids right here we go so when you are in the off season, when you're bulking, or if you're a gym rat and you want to put on size, you lean more towards the anabolic compounds. And when you're ready to cut up, show the new lines, show the crispiness, bring out hypermasculinized traits, you bring in the androgenic compounds. Ment is the holy grail of being stupid anabolic with a high estrogen conversion while still somewhat maintaining you know an andronicity that's more than deca is apparently you know what the hype around it is about when i see that estrogen conversion with me personally the estrogen I, <laughs> andrew i did the meant experiment right before my gyno surgery that was like the ha 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 like that was literally like i'm already getting gyno surgery i'm gonna shoot up a bunch of men and document it before i go get the gyno surgery so like that's that's my thought process with it i've had friends that have used 
Letrozole alongside men. So if you're bringing in the most powerful AI ever to combat men, is it just like, again, I rest my case, let's continue with the history. It was first described in the early 1960s and it was heavily being studied as a male contraceptive. Yes, it was studied as a male contraceptive. That's why it had so much backing and push as they were trying to make a male birth control. By the year 2000, Bayer bought it up and was really trying to bring a 30 year old steroid into the mainstream and kind of slot it in as the ultimate hormone replacement and or male contraceptive so this is one of these og steroids from way back when and it was pushed and pushed and pushed and then was not put on the ban list and then it flooded the underground from hype but i did want to read this little excerpt from the anabolics the attraction from bear was meant as probably not necessarily the most potent but has the ability to duplicate the positive effects of testosterone on muscle mass and male sexual function while minimizing stimulatory while minimalizing stimulatory action of the process Prostate. prostate cancer and prostate enlargement are very common problems among male in the U.S. Both diseases are fueled partly by super androgenic compounds. So this is why SARMs were developed. You want less prostate binding. You want more skeletal tissue binding. You want more anabolic, less androgenic. This is why men was still brought up from the shadows and pushed and pushed and pushed. And that's the story of how the most ancient OG androgen was brought all the way into the 2000s, not included on the ban list, and finally entered the underground scene because people can still sell it. it is what it is. That's why I created the hype. What are my thoughts? So I personally played around with Mint it's like water retention in a bottle like say goodbye to your muscle definition doesn't matter how much ai's you're using if you're using a significant amount of men you're gonna get water retention you're gonna have estrogen issues that's just me that's what happened to me and if you combine carbs on top of that and fill that with glycogen water while you're having all that estrogen conversion it's a recipe for disaster is it great for strength yes is it great for cushioning of the joints lifting stupid heavy in the off season putting on that bulk that you're gonna cut up later and you don't care if you look like a water buffalo for a few months and your blood pressure can tolerate it again it's there the blood pressure increase is very significant i noticed it without pulling my blood pressure okay so if i'm trying to use it in the ability to actually put on tons of tissue because when you go online andrew you'll read like i gained like 30 to 40 pounds on and it's the greatest thing like that's not all muscle, first off. That's like water retention, estrogen bloat. And second off, I don't know. I just feel like there's better compounds out there. I understand the hype, you know, the ment hype. I made fun of ment right before my gyno surgery and injected a bunch of it. I was super strong. It was very nice to lift heavy. Everything felt super smooth. And I don't have like too many bad things to say other than my nipples were itchy like crazy, right? I was gonna get a gyno surgery. I didn't care. That's why the reason why I ran it. <laughs> I look stupid fat on it. It's cause of water retention. It's gonna lose all your muscle. Go look at me. I'm like 260, 265 in those videos and no muscle definition, but like in person, I was a legit thick 260. So there's that. As far as doing men only, um, I don't know if there's men and nentate out there, but if there's not, then men acetate every day. I wouldn't personally run with it. That's just me. The oral no ester tablets, completely useless completely um you will notice a 30 minute spike <laughs> followed by an estrogen conversion later an hour later you know you'll, you'll see a film of water form over you i see why it's there it doesn't have as much prostate interaction it's way more anabolic it still has enough androgenic property where it's not fucking up your sex drive if you stack it with testosterone the estrogen thing is crazy you're gonna have to run an ai all the time <laughs> It's like, Andrew, like I get DMs like, how do I combat the estrogen on ment? Like, I remember when I was dosing an AI trying to keep up with it, I'm like, eh. Might as well just get gyno surgery right after the way I did it. So when you schedule your gyno surgery, just blast men and bulk up and then you'll just get the titties cut out after. I really don't see, unless you're using letrozole, how you would be able to offset actually using a significant dose of ment for a long extended period of time to get the bulk like results that are extreme. You know, I am talking shit on this compound. The bulk results are extreme. 
people have pulled it off. Not guy, no prone people have pulled it off, <laughs> but it is possible out there. So I would err on the side of caution. It's gonna fuck up your blood pressure because of the sheer water retention alone. You have to worry about that estrogen conversion. It doesn't dihydro convert apparently. I actually looked for any data to see if that's true. And they just say, oh, the elite way we set up the structure, 5AR can't do anything with it. I don't know. I'd like to see that if that's true or not, but it's all doing that weird estrogen conversion that's super powerful that you will notice that will help with lifting heavy, that will help with building muscle, that will help put on tons of size in the off season that you can cut up later with different compounds. You're gonna get, probably get gyna. You're probably <laughs> gonna like fucking either use exemistane every day or every other day. And then you're probably gonna like be like, oh, this isn't enough. It's not going away. And then you'll switch over to Letro and then you're just fucking around with Letro constantly. Like normally, Andrew, when people use Letro, you just nuke it down, you titrate off. With men, it's like, oh no, this is like a fire hydrant spraying of estrogen. You're spraying a fire hydrant back of letrozole to stop that bullshit from going on in your body. That's my thoughts on men. You know, I wasn't really the big fan of it. I understand why the hype is around it because you could gain a shit ton of size with it and it would be legit bulk fluff size, but you could cut it up with androgenic compounds and you could really form like a moldable sculpture based on a big eight month long bulk with mint and then switching into DHTs and hardening it later. I see it. I see it. Would I personally do it? No. I'll see you guys in my next video.